Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to talk to you about creating declarations in CDS with the CDS API. The CDS API can work in both RESTful and SOAP modes, so I'm going to demonstrate both. You can find more details of the CDS API and how to install and configure it in the CDS installation and configuration guide. Before we start, a short explanation about how the CDS API validates incoming declarations. The API processes the declaration or declarations sent in the call one by one, validating each declaration against an ITMAT schema for correctness. Any declarations passing this validation are assigned a final state in the same way as declarations entered directly using the CDS web application. But what happens if a declaration contains wrong or missing information? CDS can still accept incoming declarations which do not contain all required IT IMAT information by storing them in the database with a draft state, enabling them to be updated later using the API or web interface. However, declaration validation and error handling behaviour varies depending on the CDS version and whether the enhanced validation mode introduced in version 2018 SP1 is enabled. With the enhanced validation mode, CDS performs strong validation of incoming declarations against the IT map schema corresponding to the partner's IT map version, and details about which declarations did not pass validation and why can be found in the CDS logs. Note that an error is still returned for declarations which violate other types of constraints, for example, database field constraints. Without enhanced validation, CDS validation is not as thorough, with some declarations passing validation which should not, with the result that they can subsequently fail during IT mat generation when the EDI engine performs its own validation against the IT mat version of the partner. Also, as soon as CDS encounters a declaration which it cannot process, the API returns an error and processing stops completely, without logging information in the CDS logs about which declarations cause the validation to fail. The enhanced mode of validation became standard functionality in CDS Post in September 2020 and is enabled by default in all new local installations from CDS version 2020 SP1 onwards. If you are working a local CDS web instance with an earlier version or migrating your local CDS from an earlier version, you are highly encouraged to enable enhanced mode to benefit from the new declaration validation behaviour. You can do this by updating configuration parameter Create Update Dec Enhanced Mode. This parameter is available from CDS version 2018 SP1 onwards. In this video, we will only be looking at API calls with enhanced validation. For more details on which information is required in the declaration, check the CDS API reference documentation. The CDS API needs a security token to work, so we'll begin by creating a security token in CDS. We do this in the Manage Organization Preferences function. We can click New next to this field to generate the security token. Don't forget to click Store to finish. We will copy this token to include with each new API call. We will begin by creating a new declaration in CDS using a SOAP call. We're going to create an outbound declaration for an item being sent from Swiss Post to Deutsche Post. Let's open up SOAP UI and take a look. You can create a new SOAP project here, entering details of the CDS WSDL file, which lists all of the methods for you, as you can see in this project I created earlier. You can find more details of how to obtain the WSDL in the CDS installation and configuration guide, but the format's basically the one I've just entered, but with your own server name. Note that the create new declaration method is deprecated. The CDS API method for creating new declarations and also for updating existing declarations is this one, create or update declarations. I'm going to open a request window so you can see the information contained in the XML. Here we enter the security token which I created in CDS earlier and the username of the user creating the declaration here. Note that if this user doesn't exist in CDS, the new user will be created when you send the declaration. Now we have the details of the declaration itself in a CDS view element. This example contains only one declaration, although you can add a list of declarations by adding multiple C CDS view elements. Let's look at the structure of the CDS view element more closely. The two main sections are declaration and mail object. Within the declaration section, we have some initial information, 
the CDS state code, which represents the current status of the declaration. In this case, this is 3, meaning final. A draft declaration would have a CDS state code of 2. We also have the postal organisation, then the declaration data itself, which corresponds to the body of the declaration. This includes the content pieces, accompanying documents, and all the information from the other section in the CDS web interface, such as the gross weight, handling class, and so on. Finally, we have the sender and recipient details. In the mail object section of the XML, we include the details for the declaration header, the item ID, origin and destination postal organisation codes, the mail class, and so on. We're now ready to send the call to the CDS API. A quick note on security here. Before you can send HTTPS requests to your server, you need to configure a trust relationship between the client and server with certificates. You can find more details about this in the CDS installation and configuration guide. You need to make sure the WS addressing add default WSA2 option is checked before you send your first call. We can see the call has succeeded. We will now be able to find the new declaration in CDS. Here's a search I performed in search declarations earlier for outbound declarations to Deutsche Post. I'll now click search again and here it is. If we open it up we can see it's automatically been sent to customs so all of the declaration data is present and correct. Now let's look at some examples of errors. In the declaration element if we specify a postal organisation which doesn't match the CDS web instance where the token was generated, we get an error like this one. This type of error prevents the call being made and the declaration is not created. We will also receive an error if we do not specify mandatory information. If we remove the mail class, for example, we can see an error is generated as it would be when trying to store the declaration in the web interface. As we can see, this type of error is less clear than the postal organisation error, so it's important to check all mandatory information is included in your API call. Now let's remove an optional field such as recipient address line 2. We can see that no error is generated. Now let's create a declaration using REST. I have a REST project here. We need to add the body of the call in JSON format. When we send the call, we can see a 200 response showing it has been successful. Thank you for listening. I hope you've learned some useful tips about creating declarations in CDS using the CDS API. You can find some example projects for sending your own calls linked in the description below.